Do you like random chance? Do you like being at the mercy of RNG? Do you like guns, bullets, petting dogs, and... Wait, was that a buff seagull with a Gatling gun? What the fuck? Welcome to Into the Gungeon. As per the usual, I am not a reviewer, just a guy who likes playing games. Do not take my opinions to heart. Just listen and decide for yourself what you want to do with the information that you are about to be given. So, what is Into the Gungeon? Well, Gungeon is a top-down, twin-stick shooter with roguelike elements with the objective of the game being to reach the end of the fifth floor and kill the characters past, but we'll get into that later. So, what's a normal game of Gungeon look like? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just back it up a little. Let's start at the beginning. Choosing your character is one of the most important decisions at the start of every single run you will have, as not only do they have different passive perks and guns, but they also have different starting items. There are four of them when you first start, but as you'll play, you'll unlock others. My personal preference is either the soldier, as he gets an accuracy boost and a shield to start with, or the huntress, because, well, dog. I mean, come on, how can you not love him? Once deciding your character and descending into the gungeon, the world will generate and you'll be set on your new adventure. From this point on, everything has been randomized. The guns and items you get, the rooms you'll enter, the bosses you'll fight, no two runs are ever the same, and your ability to adapt and overcome are vital here. So let's get down to brass tacks and talk gameplay, since it's what you'll be doing moment to moment. You got your moving, your shooting, your reloading, your dodge rolling, your blanks button, which cancels out any bullet within a radius of you, your petting the dog button, which doubles as an interactive button, don't know why they'd interact with anything other than the dog, but you know, whatever I guess, and finally, your active item button. On each floor, there are always two chests, one with a gun, one with an item, both locked and needing a key, which you can either find or buy. Speaking of buying, there's a shop on every floor with randomized things for sale, usually hearts and keys, sometimes armor, and a weapon or item, and a separate table to buy blanks, which is always handy. On each floor, there's also a boss. Each floor has their own bosses, so while you can end up fighting the same boss over and over, your equipment will more than likely always be different. Upon beating the boss, you're given access to the elevator to take you down to the next floor, which will allow you to continue your run. Rinse and repeat this four times total, and you can fight the dragon. Now this might seem like I skipped a lot, but I did, for good reason too. See, with Gungeon, each floor is essentially the same. The style, the enemies, and the hazards are different, yeah, but fundamentally they all work the same. You're never dealing with a brand new mechanic thrown at you. So I'm leaving some things for you as a surprise, but making sure that you know what you need to succeed. Upon besting the Dragon, you finally get your hands on the gun that can kill the past, and after building the bullet that can kill the past, you can successfully, well, kill your past. Upon success of this feat, you're given a new outfit for your Gungeoneer and their abilities can spawn as pickups in the Gungeon. Simple, right? Wrong. The bullet that kills the past is really annoying to get your hands on, as it comes in four separate parts and if you don't give them to the gunsmith on the fifth floor, you have to recollect them. The game also just doesn't tell you how to get any of these pieces, as they're all supposed to be puzzles. Do I hate this? No, not really. Was it annoying though? Yeah, a bit. However, once you get the parts to her, you never have to get them again. After that, it's simply a breeze. There's also other modes of this game too. A boss rush mode, a rainbow mode which gives you one chest on each floor for you to fight with, and a challenge mode that adds modifiers to each room you fight in. The sound design is nice too. Each gun sounds good, with each explosion being punchy, every table flip sounding thunky, and guns overall just sounding like you would imagine they should. Speaking of guns, there's a wild variety, so much that just naming them all off would be its own separate, very long video. But my favorites include the Disintegration Ray, a skateboard that kickflips when you reload, a baseball bat, and an AK-47. I mean, what can I say? I appreciate the classics. You also get items to help you, both passives and actives. Some passives include a clone where upon death you spawn on floor 1 with all of your gear. Another passive is just, well, dogs. I mean, let's be honest, best passive. But they do dig up items for you, which only makes them better. Actives are abilities for a short period of time, but most are reusable. Things like double bullets or a horn that temporarily turns an enemy into a friend. So why do I personally like this game and recommend it to you? Well, I mean, I mean, come on. I think the footage speaks for itself. Uh, but seriously, don't you like guns, explosions, carnage, bullet hells, and bees? Sure, fuck it. If so, this is a game made for you. It's also co-op.
fucking idiot. <laughs> Why do an R? What the fuck is an R for? It's a book. Oh. It's braided. <laughs> Motherfucker, you got a dodge. <laughs> Damn it. Don't you remember dodgeball? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the five D's, you dumbass. Dive, dip, duck, dodge. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, every time I keep dodging, I'm dodging into fucking bullets. Well, stop. Oh. <laughs> Brandon, do not just stand into the. Brandon, I swear to God. There's no shot. What going on? Am I alive? No, dead? you're dead. Uh, There's no sh <sighs> Hey, buddy. You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. But only on the couch. It's a silly game with some challenges. What's there not to like about it? And hey, if all of that doesn't convince you to buy the game, not even the dog petting, you can kick this asshole's helmet right off the ledge. That's not to say this game is without faults, of course. I mean, no game is. The High Priest fight alone is worth resetting an entire run for, but I find that the pros outweigh any cons you find so much that they're just not worth considering. So, buy the game. Play it. Hell, watch someone better than me play it. Consume the media. It's on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and XS, Switch and PC, so you have no excuses not to buy it other than... It's just not your type of game, I guess. And that's really all I've got for this video. I kind of just kept it short because, well, I wanted to talk about Gungeon, but I didn't actually plan to talk about Gungeon, so it just kind of happened. Anyways, I'll see you guys on whichever live stream you decide to join. Maybe you'll, you know, pop into the Discord or something. I don't know. Who really cares as long as you're enjoying your day? Fuck it. Have a good night, everybody.